this year, one of the plays that actually spoke to women of all ages and all colors was School Girls or the African American Mean Girls play. And we have... Jocelyn Bio, I'm the playwright. Paige Gilbert, I play Gifty. Zainab Ja, I played Eloise Amponsa. <laughs> Mami Abuafo, I play Paulina Sapon. Myra Lucretia Taylor, I play the headmistress. Abena Menzabansu, I play Nana. Now, your play, I think, speaks to women of all colors. I think that we all have problems dealing with what we think about ourselves. Is that what you wanted from this play? I mean, well, it's a deeply personal play um, for me, but I think there is a real universality in that we all experience um, self-esteem issues, especially in high school, and I wanted to be able to talk about that. Um, and through the portal of these like beautiful you know, Ghanaian women, my parents are from Ghana, and so it was a lovely way to like kind of pay homage to uh, my country and then be able to kind of you know show that we're um, all more alike you know than different. Now I think in this world it's hard to stay positive with everything that's going on so I want to know from each one of you what do you do to stay positive? Um, pray? <laughs> I think that's the best answer. <laughs> I <can>. Meditate. <laughs> I eat a lot of oysters and I do yoga <laughs> and I run. Stay in touch with friends and watch um, great shows that keep me laughing. I believe in my family. Stay in touch with my family and my friends. Um, express gratitude daily, self-care. Now, Schoolgirls is getting a reprise. Yeah. Where are you playing next and when can we see you? Um, we will be um, at back at the Lucille Hotel Theater in October. But prior to that, we're going to be in Los Angeles at CTG at the Kirk Douglas Theater in the, for the month of September. So, yeah, come see it in New York. We'll be back. Oh, LA. Yeah, we're yeah, all come we're to LA. LA. Oh, if you saw K-pop, you saw her as an overwrought singer who was just having it not having it at all anymore and you saw her in Mean Girls she overtakes the stage Aww. Ashley you come up with so many amazing characters what of you do you bring to your role you know I've been so lucky to work with such amazing creative teams and writers in that every role that I do I just want to find where it lies honestly within me and so I try to find like the spine of that character and um, just bring out a part of myself to infuse into their character and it's always so much more rewarding for everybody in that way and I really have had the writing teams and the creative teams that support that process well in Mean Girls I didn't know you were such a dancer oh my you're God. like you're like bendy <laughs> Right, my, well my Broadway debut is Mamma Mia and ever since then I've mostly done roles that are just standing and singing um, and still physical but not, never dancing and so Casey Nicola when I got cast he actually called me and he asked are you comfortable with dancing at all because he hadn't seen me dance in anything and I said oh my gosh please I'd be honored to do Casey Nicola choreography and with this cast I mean this cast their energy the dancing is unbelievable so it's yeah but yours is spectacular I swear oh. you're like Gumby <laughs> Yeah, it's super fun. Yeah, well, as soon as I don't get, as soon as I get sneakers instead of heels, it's like really fun. But yeah, um, it's very hard to stay positive in this industry. What do you do to stay positive? Oh gosh, I really try to make it my mantra to surround myself with good people and like look at all these people in this room. Everybody's just so lovely, and when everyone is about the work and the craft, then we get to have so much fun with each other. And so I think that I've just tried to surround myself with these amazing people and to be about the work and just to be kind to everybody and I'm so grateful every step of the way I'm so grateful to be included today so yeah your role in K-pop to Mean Girls is very different what would you like to take on next oh my gosh you know it's been really fun for me to look at both of these shows kind of came out like Mean Girls I was given the audition one week and then the next week I was cast so I really have no control it's so what's so fun and exciting and scary about this business is that you just can never predict where you're gonna go next and so like I'm kind of just open right now to whatever is next if you want to laugh from the Book of Mormon to now Mean Girls you're talking Gray Henson Gray <laughs> hi so what what a 
of your character, what of you do you bring to the character? Um, a lot of me. I well, the thing is, um, I I was Damien in high school. I was a drama freak. I was I was gay, but I wasn't out of the closet. So Damien's confidence and his sass is something a little bit more than I ever had in high school. So it's fun getting to play that now. But I'm definitely bringing a lot of myself to the role, which is I think why I'm having so much fun doing it. Now it's very hard to stay positive in this world. What do you do to stay positive? I have a really great group of friends and a really wonderful family. And um, you, you know, I, I, I try not to, to care too much, if, if that makes sense. You know, I think what's so wonderful about the award season is that we're celebrating so many people, but I like to keep my um, priorities straight with just taking it one day at a time and treating myself really well. Because um, that's more important than anything else, yeah. And what would you like to, what would kind of show would you like to do next? You know, I really would love to do like a straight play, like sort of a dark drama even. I I did the Book of Mormon before this and I love musical comedy and I think I do it well, but I like to sort of flex my muscles elsewhere. Is there a type of role that you'd like to play? Oh, you mean like a specific role? I don't know. I haven't really thought of anything specifically, but hopefully something will come up. Or, you know, I'd love to get more involved in television and see where that would take me. But honestly, if I could work with Tina Fey again, it'd be amazing. Right now, we're with Kate Rockwell. Kate, what were you nominated for? I was nominated for Featured Actress in Mean Girls the Musical. Now, this is a show that's got a lot of negative to it. How do you stay positive to stay in your role? It has, I'm so sorry, it has a lot of what? Negative from, you know, girls hitting, making fun of other girls. Oh. But your character stays super positive. So what do you do to stay so positive? Well, at first I don't think that any of us see it as negative. I think even bullies don't mean to be bullies. They think that they're doing the right thing and they're trying to protect themselves. Um, but Karen's a little bit different even than the other plastics. She really, I don't think, has a negative bone in her body. I think she's actually incredibly positive, but she isn't maybe aware of the impact that her actions and her words have on other people. Um, she kind of lives in her own little world and maybe isn't the brightest crayon in the box. So I think she's just super unaware, unfortunately, that she has that impact on people. But for me, I don't feel negative at all. I never have a negative experience on stage. It's all super positive. This year, there are so many amazing supporting roles, and yet you stand out. Where, what part of you brings that? Where did you bring of yourself to that? Oh gosh, I don't know. Um, I think I think it's just about. I hope it's just about being truthful in the moment and uh, having a love for what you do and the love for the character that you're playing and the show that you're performing in. Um, I think that sometimes can shine through no matter what it is that you're doing. My favorite musical this year, Desperate Measures, and here we are with one of the producers, Pat Addis. Hello, how are you? Good. I am so excited that we won the honor of awarding this for Desperate Measures. Now, when does Desperate Measures reopen? It's going to reopen at the New World Stages on June, no, well, it's the opening night is June 13th, but we start previews May 30th. I hope you're going to come. I will be there. Now, it's very hard to stay positive in this world. What do you do to stay positive? Well, produce shows like Desperate Measures, which everybody walks out of the theater happy, although it's very relevant because we have the governor of Arizona in 1890 hitting on a nun. So it's very relevant, but it has a very happy ending. So everybody walks out happy. And I think these desperate times call for desperate measures. When you're looking for spiritual music and music that actually upholds your soul, you're looking for David Friedman and his new musical, Desperate Measures. David. Hi. 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 How are you? I'm so excited to be here and be part of this. It's really, and we actually, we were late today because we are in our first day of rehearsal for Desperate Measures for the transfer to New World Stages. So I had to be at rehearsal, you know, work first. Now your music always has had a positive and a spiritual outlook. Where do you come from to write this? Actually, I don't have a positive spiritual outlook at all. My music comes to me and through me because I need it. If you think I think help is on the way, you're out of your mind. But I, I feel like I receive my music because I need it and I pass on the lessons. What kind of songs do we need right now? 
we need the kind of songs we have in Desperate Measures, right? No, we need, we need songs that create kindness, create love, create excitement, create laughter. I mean, one of the things we're doing with Desperate Measures is we're taking serious subjects but really laughing and really having a joyous time. And I think we need a good, positive laugh now. That's what, you know, to open our hearts. That's... Your musical gives so much. What are you working on now? Well, uh, Peter and I are working on, we have three other musicals, one called Okasan and Nicolette, which is about, oh, the Middle East and black and white and uh, religious stuff, but hilarious. We're working on a musical about Nellie Bly, who was an extraordinary uh, female example of power and of commitment. And we have a musical called Money Talks, in which Ben Franklin is a hundred dollar bill who's passed from person to person about the money that, that uh, how we use money today. So we're working on all Does it talk about uh, inflation? <laughs> Does it talk about inflation? Uh, no, it doesn't. No. Well, because if you're passing that hundred dollar bill around, by the time it gets to now, it's like, one cent. Yeah, it's, it's, it's true. Pete, Peter, in this world right now, it's, it's very hard to say positive. How do you say positive? Oh, I mean, I, I think uh, all of our stuff ends up being positive because laughing is a, a cathartic experience and David's music is very moving. So we, we, I think every show we have has some sort of positive yes. message at the end. Yeah. Even Nellie Bly, which kind of, she loses all her money, there's a, a positive message at the end of it. Well, I have to say that what Peter is brilliant at is taking a subject that's serious, because Desperate Measures is based on measure for measure, which is about virtue and right and wrong and stuff like that, and Peter takes a light touch to it, which makes it easier for me to write the music. And so, people can, what did you say once, if you don't know whether to laugh or cry about what's going on, come to Desperate Measures, you know. And, do both. Yeah. Yes. and when do you open? We open for previews May 30th, and for opening night is uh, June 13th at New World Stages. And in quoting Desperate Measures, it is just for you. <laughs> Thank you. And if I step down, I say, gentlemen.